dropping in? I don't know. I think so. I don't see you. All right, so within the human um, brain stem, which is the reptilian portion of the brain, there's 12 sites or centers, or as we call them, the 12 sites of melanin or melanin centers. Um, if you get the book, African Origin of Biological Psychiatry by Dr. Richard King. He's an MD. Um, hold on, please. All right. Apologize for that. Still trying to get people in. All right. So um, within the human brain stem, which is called the reptilian portion of the brain, there are 12 melanin centers or sites. You can get this information from African Origin of Biological Psychiatry by Dr. Richard King. All right. You have the, the locus 
Corellius, which means the black dot, is also called the mental neuromelanin tract. It's the hidden doorway to the collective unconsciousness or darkness. It is the principle, all right, understand this, norepin, a norepinephrine nerve, which is supplied to the cortex. It also involved the REM sleep, which is rapid eye movement. It allows the individual to remain conscious while dreaming. So this is the area in which that gives you lucid dreaming, but it's also especially good for astral travel or projection, as well as also doing soul travel events. It also helps in the process of recalling dreams, right? Then you have the substantia nagra, right? This is the same as the individual that you spoke of, coming from, all right, and it's not an actual individual. It is actually a concept, sub which comes from what we refer to as the um, uh, the Necronomicon, the Necromancy, study the dead. The reason why this is talked about because this is the area actually in your brain called the substantia nigra, which means the black substance. It's the eleventh in the chain of the black neuro or uh, the brainstem neuromelanin nerve tract. The loss of neuromelanin in this neck, um, nucleus is known to result in what we call um, disease or disorders, ailment, sickness, known as Parkinson's disease, which is an accumulation actually of aluminum. Right, you have the um, the Barchilius. All right, you have um, the, um, the Pa Nicholas. You have the Inter um, Corporalis Subcilius. You have the Nervi or Nervi Trigeni. You have the Meso um, Saphesis. Sophisius, you have the Pontus, Centralis, Oritus, you have the uh, Tegmenti, um, Pidin, um, Culo Pontus, the Pero, Gracilius, the Medialis, um, the Medialis, Dorso, Moda, and the last is the Retro. Ambitious. All right, these are the 12 areas in the brain stem. All right, on the reptilian portion of the brain, which normally all 12 sites are activated within us, only about two to four sites are activated in the European. All right, this is according to Nutricize by Dr. Imhotep Leila Africa. Okay, this is the reason why. Um, they can become possessed easier, all right, because of the non-activation of the melanin sites within the reptilian portion of the brain in which that entities from the lower fourth dimension can actually take over um, and control or mind control um, their bodies. It's called possession, right, human possession or mankind possession, all right? This is what this is really talking about. All right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So not only do we tell you the reason why this occurs more within the Europeans of what is called demonic possession, and I hate to use the word demon because the word demon actually is from atum on. Atum on uh, become timon, a timon, all right, team on, in which that becomes the word demon um, within the English translation. And team means atum or atin is nothing more than atom of the physical body, um, which, of course, atom within Hebrew means ground, bread. All right, so we're talking about physical incarnation, something that's material. All right, that's what this reference is to. So we know that a spirit um, can take over the physical body of someone based on the shutting down or the shutdown of these particular sites 
within the brain stem or the reptilian portion of the brain, in which that causes them not to be able to um, believe themselves of these type of possessions, all right, unless they get into more spiritual aspects and also part of the upper portion of the reptilian portion of the brain is the pineal gland, so they will have to make sure that the pineal gland is fully activated in order for them to be able to do so. And there's certain tones in which that can help with the activation of the pineal gland. And that is T-H-O-H. Oh. <laughs> So the throw sound, in order to know that the pineal gland is fully activated, a good source of magnesium will help with the decalcification of the pineal gland. Right. right, magnesium. Right, so if you was wondering if your pineal gland is calcified, also when you do those tones that I just did, the T-H-O-H sound, so if you do I. I sound, or if you e, the E sound, or if you do Y, the Y sound, those are the sounds that activate the hypothalamus gland, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, and the thalamus gland in the brain. What are known as the crystal city or the crystal palace, as it is known within Taoism. It's called as the crystal city within the Bible, these four. Right, this is symbolic to the four horsemen that's mentioned in the book of Revelation. All right? Because a lot of this information stems from what is called the hippocampus area of the brain, which means white horse. Which is talking about the white horse in which that Jesus was come down on with thousands tens of thousands of angels, right? But that is known as Pegasus within the Greek, the white horse with the flying wings. That is talking about the, the white horse or the hypocampus area of the brain, which is actually white brain matter. And campus means horse. So this white horse is where Jesus would come down at. There was a gland that was once there called the very gland, right? But now it's been reinserted under here at the, right here under the chin area, about an inch or so behind the chin and about two inches above the hollow area in the throat, right? Where your thyroid and parathyroid glands are located at along the side of the throat here. So this is where your berry gland is now located at, which is known as the talu. T-A-L-U, talu gland, or um, as it is called um, within the Hindu or the Hindu Kushites, um, known as the Hindu people or the Vedic um, text. The um, yogi practitioners refer to it as the talu gland. Then, um, of course, Dr. York speaks about that. And then, of course, there's another gland inside the mouth, which is a mound area, which is up at the top roof of the mouth, which is called the epiphany gland. All right? So you have all these various glands um, that is now being reinstated based on genetics, based on your ancestry, that is now being grown. Once you reach a certain conscious level, they re-manifest within your body. All right? When they talk about the scientists um, no longer allow for these um, organs to grow in the body because they was taken out, all that is, all that is fictitious. They simply went dormant, all right? And it's talking about the 12 pair of cranial nerves. It wasn't until you activated certain pairs of cranial nerves within um, that sits around the pineal gland inside the brain that these particular glands began to grow and start to uh, 
develop the abilities in your body. The abilities in which that you would develop is the gifts of miracles, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpreting tongues, um, the gift of healing, the gift of prophecy, um, the gift of um, understanding, all right, the gift of faith, the gift of knowledge. These are known as the nine fruits of Christ, which is mentioned in the first Corinthians, the twelfth chapter. This is what you develop. Within the occult, we refer to it as um, uh, psych chemistry, clairvoyance, clairaudience, clairgestance, clairsentience, um, intuition. You know, these are the ones that we refer to them as, which is the higher five senses in which that you normally use, which is seeing, touching, tasting, smelling, and hearing. All right. So you have higher states. All right. So this is what this is all talking about. So upon the activation of these 12 sites in the reptilian portion of the brain and then on to the 12 pair of cranial nerves, then you can become um, an individual in which that now can deal with some higher um, sciences. Until then, you're still playing. And even though you might have the organs that you don't have the gift or you haven't activated the gift yet in order to help you transform your body into light. That's the whole point of working with energetic or energy levels is to help bring your body into a light form. All right. All right. So that's what we're going to continue going over tonight. To me, that's the most important aspect. That is the ultimate level. That's really what you want, all right, in life, right? Now, many will teach you all types of nonsense about history, but the, be, the truth of the matter is that your ass was not there, <laughs> all right? My ass was not there. And what I mean by that is that you don't have a conscious memory of the things in which that took place, all right? So let's say... There was parts of things in which that happened in slavery. You wouldn't know it unless you have to do something phenomenal such as channeling, tapping into the Akashic records, all right? Because the thoughts of every being that ever existed exists in the astral plane, in the Akashic records, in the etheric plane, as they also refer to it as, all right? So you can't tap into that. You know, um, haphazardly, you have to learn how to do it on a, a regular basis so that you can get and have correct information, right? Many times people don't have correct information. And, uh, channeling. and this is the reason why I don't deal with so-called people's channeled information because it can't be verified often. You know what I'm saying? And then, like, Europeans who be talking about... Um, you know, metal ships and all these types of things. You know, all metal ships is coming from Earth. All right, real ships are not made of metal. All right, real ships are light vehicles. Okay, they're known as macabas. And you can transform your body into a light body and activate your macabre. And go through t uh, what's called wormholes to other planets, such as to Sirius, the constellation Sirius, to those particular planets, and to where there's other life at in this so-called galaxy. Okay. Will you show us anything about channeling or not at all? Um, there's nothing to show about channeling. Uh, when, when you do Reiki, you become an open channel for the energy to come down, and you just simply tune yourself to the frequencies and listen to the ancestors as they come to you. It's nothing spectacular. You know, I mean, it's the same with uh, remote viewing. You can be on the dance floor and get a transmission. You know, the thing is, is mastering those levels so that you are able to um, do it at will. 
and not just and just not it happen um, whenever it wants to. Okay. So scientists have documented that the photon energy of the average human body emits the equivalent energy of a 120 watt light bulb or 120 volt battery or 25,000 BTUs. Each cell emits 100,000 photons per second and there are more than 76 trillion cells in your body. Also, our auric field or astral star body, which that's what you're trying to turn yourself back into, the higher astral body, spiritual body as it's also called, is eternal. It's the equivalent to the lifetime of the universe, which is about 10 E22 years. All right? Of course, 22 is um, how many zeros come after that 10. The auric field contains the electronic mass of 4 E21, which is 21 elect um, zeros after the four of electrons, all right? When you pass human form, that's what you become, is the electronic emission of the electronic mass in which that remains after the death of the physical body. If you do your information correctly, you can resurrect from a physical body into a light body or what's called incorruptible body, also called the celestial body, also called the rainbow body, also called the diamond body, also called the golden dragon body. Many names based on the various cultures, right? Yes. Now, if we ignore the auric field's importance, which we oftentimes do, we will actually be ignoring the nine-tenth of your existence, because that's where... Um, most of the electronic mass actually dwells at, right, in which that you take with you after the death of the physical body. So the mind exists within the layers of the auric field and is equivalent to the diameter of the universe, 76 quintillion miles in diameter. Right, so, right, quantum physicists has now come to the conclusion that more than 90% of our human anatomy is composed of stardust particles. So if you're not supposed to be a star, then why is more than 90% of your human body composed of stardust particles? And these particles are called biophotons. A biophoton is called a ultra-weak photonic emission, or photon emission, UPE. And it's light particles that is emitted by all living things. It's an aspect of our aura called the bioplasmic body. So it exists in the, invis in the visible and the ultraviolet spectrum. So when ultraviolet light comes from the sun, that helps to ignite all right, our bioplasmic body, which is our auric field based on the stardust particles called biophotonic energy or biophotons. Okay? That's what's going on. Right? So, we can take it to leave it alone. This is the highest level. This is what we should be working towards. Right? This is what we should be working towards. Oftentimes, we won't get it because we become bogged down with nonsense in this material world. And this is actually the test. This is what the devil is here to do. The devil is here in order to make you not see your full potential and not to make you understand that you are a star being and that all the indigenous cultures around the world, coming from the aborigines, coming from the um, Africans, coming from the Native Americans or indigenous aborigines here within the Americas, we all said the same thing, is that when your physical body dies, you become a star up in the sky. This is shown to you in Lion King. When Simba's father, Mufasa, died, he became a star up in the sky. Right or wrong? Right. All right? So that was all symbolic. Right? That is all symbolic. Right, so when Dr. Zane Rangaliak, 
of um, Lazo University in China measured the flow of qi from the human body with a unique biological detector. He showed that not only does the aura pulse, but that not everyone's human energy field pulse at the same rate or intensity. This study was repeated by researchers at the Shanghai Atomic Nuclear Institution, institution or Institute of Academia um, Sinisca. Right? Sovereign scientists from the Bioinformational Institute, headed by A.S. Pow Pow, Po Pow, um, actually measured the human energy field, or more specifically, the bio currents manifested in the surrounding energy body. They discovered that the living organism animate um, um, vibrations at a rate of a, between 3,000 to 2,000 nanometers. They call this field the biofield and discovered that people with a strong and widespread biofield can transfer energy more successfully. This is the reason why we're teaching you Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pranic Energy, so that you can transfer energy more successfully. This research may later, was later confirmed by the Medical Science Academy in Moscow. A special form of photography is able to take pictures of the auric field. In the 1930s, Russian scientist um, Semyon um, Kurlian and his wife, Valencia, invented a new photographic process that involved directing a high-frequency elect um, electrical field at the object. The object pattern of luminescence, the auric human field, energy field, and even then by capturing it on film. Contemporary practitioners are using Kurlian photography to show how the aura responds to different emotional and mental states, even diagnose illnesses and other problems. All right? Um, medical science is now using a heat aura as well as other imaging processes to slow the different aspects of the body's electromagnetic. A mag a magnetics. All right, so here we have the um, Kurlian camera. As you see, it goes back since the 1930s. And as you see, it employs a special type of film to illuminate the force field or life field or life energy or auric field, as it's also called around plants, animals, and persons or people. Kurlian imagery reveals that all living beings emanate a set of electromagnetic fields. Okay? So as we see here, we see sprout, coca, um, organic mushrooms, conventional mushrooms, um, organic broccoli, conventional broccoli, cooked baby carrots, raw baby carrots, all right, organic tomatoes, conventional tomatoes, all right, so forth and so on. So one of the most compelling sets of studies in this area was conducted by Dr. Um, Valerie Hunt in the study of structural neuromuscular energy field and emotional approaches, she records the frequency of the low millen, um, a millili, um voltage signature emanating from the body during rofing um, sessions. She made the recordings using electrodes of silver and, and silver chloride on the skin. Scientists then analyzed the wave patterns recorded with a um, forwarder analysis and a sonogram frequency analysis. The human energy field did indeed consist of a number of different color bands which correlated to the chakras. The following results taken from February 1988 studies show color frequencies coordinating to hertz or cycles per second. So blue, 250 to 275 hertz plus 1,200 hertz, green 250 hertz to 475 hertz, yellow 500 hertz to 700 hertz, orange 950 to 150 um, hertz, uh, red 1,000 or 1,200 hertz, um, violet 1,000 to 2,100 um, plus 300, 400 to 600 to 800 hertz, 
white to 1100 to 2000 hertz. So it shows the awakening chakra and the aura corresponds or responds to every emotion and thought that you have. Sympathy, empathy, love, desire, jealousy, anger, joy, depression, or sense, and expressed through the auric field. How we feel about ourselves is expressed through our emotions and our thoughts and our actions. We believe that we keep this inside and that no one is aware of how we feel, but the aura reflects the energy. All right, which some people can see with the naked eye and others feel energetically around the person. Right? You can feel the influences of the person through their aura. The aura field creates a vibe, an energy field, which resonates and expands outward and affects each person who comes in contact with it. So if your auric field is res uh, resonating um, strong energy, people who will be drawn to you as your auric field is expressing a vibe of personal magnetism which attracts others into your field. If you are feeling depressed, the aura pulls inward and grows thin and has to spend time pulling the energy to sustain the field, which leaves little room for it to expand and develop. When a person is angry for a long period of time, the energy hardens in the aura and becomes um, almost impenetrable, which, uh, which slows the flow of the light and energy to back to move back and forth through the each field. <clears throat> All right. Inside it builds um instead it builds like a um inside like a volcano and erupts when um enough pressure allows it to explode through the hardening auric wall. So when we learn to properly breathe, um or breathing techniques in combination with meditation and spiritual practices we can gain more control over our auric fields and learn to expand them, raise the energies, increase the amount of magnetism, energy, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? <clears throat> as well as, as you see here, and light in the auric field. <clears throat> so how do we know? Because Russian scientists photographed the soul leaving the body at death. In timing of astrogen and embodiment in which that the soul or spirit leaves the body and has been captured by Russian scientist Konstantin Korotov, um, who photographed a person at the moment of death with a bioelectrographic um, camera, very similar to Curly and camera photography as we just went over. All right? So this is what the scientists show. Now, we had this also done back in um, the early 1900s, right? This is Dr. Duncan McDougal, right? He was known for having weighed the human soul, and he said that it was 7 ounces or 21 grams, all right? 21 ounces, no, excuse me, 21 grams or 7 ounces. So it weighed, the soul weighed about 7 ounces and 21, or 21 grams. Right, so um, Haven Hill, Massachusetts, October the 15th, Dr. McDougall, um, Duncan McDougall is a, a surgeon known particularly for his experiments in the weighing of the soul, died at his home today at the age of 54. Through delicate weighing devices, he calculated the weight of the um, human soul at between 6 and 8 ounces. Well, what's in between 6 and 8 is 7. So why they just didn't say 7 ounces is beyond me. Um, in this research, which extended three years, he said he took into account the actual weight of the body immediately before and immediately after death. All right? Now, get this book by Dr. Mitchell Gibson, MD. He wrote this book called The Human Body of Light. Right? And there's a mantra in which that if it's recited 100 times a day, merely 100 times a day, without interruption, one will become attracted to others who effortlessly comes by food and wealth and the necessities of life. If one recites it 8,000 or 10,000 times on a daily basis, one is able to literally overwhelm others with one's brilliance 
in the sense of becoming very charismatic and influential in exerting a positive influence over others. And one will gain unhindered forces of blessings or blissfulness, as we say, in spiritual power. If one repeats it a hundred thousands or a million times on a regular basis, one will become capable of, of um, effecting any measurable um, great benefit from being. And, uh, Aline, would you be able to explain how that works? Because I read that at yeah. the end of your book, uh, it was yeah. the 99 uh, uh, things of the law. law. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. But I didn't understand how it worked because I started saying it, but I was like, you know, I need a bit more context to really right. uh, understand what's going on. Okay. Well, we'll get to it right now. So exactly as one wished to do. So if one recites the mantra three to seven million times, one is never separated from the Buddha um, of the three times and one being inseparable from him. All the gods and demons of existence will attend to one and offer their praise. In the most excellent of cases, individuals will, reach, will obtain the rainbow body, the final level of attainment in this lifetime. The secret knowledge that allows this transformation has been protected by several sacred orders that have closely guarded this information for centuries. To date, more than 100,000 priests have obtained the rainbow body using these practices. As we speak, there are literally hundreds of priests and masters utilizing these techniques in order to obtain the supreme realization. Let us explore the roots of this long and proud tradition. So here we have Om Hong Vajra Guru Padma Siddhi Hong Om Hong Vajra Guru Padme Siddhi Hong Om Hong Vajra Guru Padma Siddhi Hong Om Hong Vajra Guru Padme Siddhi Hong Om Hong Vajra Guru Pima Siddhi Hong Om Hong Vajra Guru Pima Siddhi Hong Om Hong Vajra Guru Pima Siddhi Hong Oh ma hong vajra guru pi ma siti hong oh ma hong vajra guru pi ma siti hong oh ma hong vajra guru pi mi siti hong all right so reciting this as many times as you can a day all right keeps your mind pure and as it says it attracts to you positive influences it magnetizes your aura. The necessities of life, which is your food, water, wealth, everything will be taken care of because people will be brought into that aura because of being magnetized by you in order to, and you having a positive influence over others, as it says, you know, you have spiritual powers that you will gain as well as also blissfulness, right, from the regular usage or the practices, all right? So... What I use or what is known as my prayer beads, all right? And it's the same thing within Sufism. La ilaha illallah, 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 la ilaha illallah. All right? So whatever method of mantra in which that you take or hesi or hakahu, which means sounds of power, words of power, you can bring these positive forces into your life. Okay? Now what does Om Ha Hong Vajra Guru Pima Siti Hong mean? Basically it means that you are vibrating at the level of the universal consciousness and allowing that consciousness to be the great teacher of your life in which that brings you the gifts of the universe. City means gifts. What are these gifts? These are the same gifts that I may mention of earlier of the nine fruits of Christ, the gift of miracles, the gift of speaking in tongues, the gift of interpreting tongues, the gift of um, knowledge, the gift of faith, the gift of um, prophecy, 
gift of healing, all these things you will develop. Right? La ilaha illallah within Arabic means, because this is Sanskrit that I'm talking about, Om Haan Hon, Vajra Guru, Pita Mi Hon, um, Siddhi Hon. That is um, the Vedic or Sanskrit. Right? La ilaha illallah, Wadhu la Siddhi Kalahu, that's Arabic. So, La ilaha illallah, that is talking about the activation of the heart chakra. In Sufism, they tell you that the closest place that you can meet God is in your heart. This is the same thing that's taught within the Moral Science Temple or the Moral Science Formation of Prophet Noble Ali. So the closest place you can meet Allah is in your heart. So listen to La ilaha illallah, that whole phrase, which means nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it. What that means, the ha, or that ha, 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 that is the activation of the heart chakra. That is the sound that activates the heart chakra. So when you see us doing this, uh, and when you see that, right, uh, Uh, all right. Notice that Om Ha Ha is also in what you just what we just went over. Om Ha Om Vajra Guru Hidma City Om. Yeah, ha sound is in there, right after om, which is the universal sound. That's the sound that produced the universe into existence, that humming noise. This is why people who hum, right, oftentimes have good life. Mm, they humming, just always humming. Mm. That's the sound of the universe. That's the sound that the bee make. The mosquito, the fly, the gnat, you, if you understand that sound, okay? So this is the highest obtainment of our lifetime is to transform back into a light being, a light vessel or vehicle, okay? So anytime that you do the 99 attributes of a law, all right, you can do it with your beads. You can order the beads from our website. We have these beads, real something simple, but it helps you remember to count. Because after each count, you're moving a bead down, just like in mathematics, right? You're subtracting the bead, but at the same time, you add in to the name of a law. Right? And Allah is nothing more than your divine soul, your higher self. That's what Allah is. All right? The word Allah means the nothingness. And that's what you're trying to get back to is the nothingness. Right? La ilaha illallah. Watahu la shirikalahu. Nothing would exist if Allah didn't create it. He's alone and has no partners. That is the same thing of the state of Nevada. Buddhism. That's the same thing within Hinduism, the state of Saraswati, the nothingness. That's the same state within Taoism, which they call the Wu Chi, the nothingness. And what we mean by nothingness don't mean that there is no thing. It just means that the mind is intangible. You can't see the mind. So hence, it's nothing or no thing. But it doesn't exist, obviously, in this physical world. Why? Because I can't see it. I can't see your mind, can I? Can I see your mind? <laughs> so that means that it's nothing. And that nothing is what brought something into existence. The mind brought your physical body into existence. How did that happen? The ancestors came together from the previous universe 
Their mind, their consciousness, and form this universe into existence and, and to dwell in their creation, through their creation. And you being the epitome of that God force have the capability of transforming yourself back into a light being, pure light, a light vessel, vehicle. Everybody get this. All right? So, we have these prayer beads, which that helps you keep your mind on your God, which is your higher self. You're talking about the God within you, not externally. We don't play that. Right? There's nothing outside of you. Even though greater is he within you than he that is in the world. That's in First Peter's. Four, four, if I'm not mistaken. Right? So that's what we're talking about. Greater is he within you than he that is in the world. The he uh, is talking evening, about your higher self. Yes. Uh, good evening, Dr. Dr. L. Bay. This, this is Robert. And, and yes, good evening Robert. to the other brother. Good evening to the other mm-hmm. brother. Uh, I, I want to ask you something about the mind. You were speaking of calcification or calcifying. Uh, Right, at the pioneer gland. Mm-hmm. Oh, at the pioneer gland, okay. And, right. Uh, the pioneer gland is physically hit hard, not the mind. And I, I, that's, that's what no, I mean. not the mind. Not okay, the mind. Got, got, got. But in order for the brain and the pioneer, because the, the pioneer gland is the concentration of light um, at the um, brain in which that interacts between the physical world and the spiritual world. That's what your pioneer gland does. It's the bridge. That is um, the bridge of um, from Earth to um, on the um, on the movie Thor, Asgard. Is a bridge. Well, the pineal gland acts as a bridge between the physical world and the etheric or spiritual or what is called the astral world, which is the star plane. Okay, okay. and you speak of proton. You need to, uh, what, proton with. Uh Proton, not proton, mm-hmm. not proton, but um, neutrons. No, not not proton, not um, not. You're talking about laser. Protons. That's on a laser level. Right, not not protons, but photons. Got, photons photon, photon, light. Photon. Right, photon okay. is light, and photons, which is called prana, chi or key energy, interacts with the electrons of your body and raises the electrons to emit a higher vibration in which that can eventually transform your body into a star being. Yes. Okay. So, we also have another mantra. Right? According to the legend, memorizing the body of light mantra causes changes within the mind and the body of the user. The accumulation of these changes is the creation of the human body of light. Now, the Karthars believe that the object of life on earth was to transform the human body into a immortal vessel of light. And that is what all teachings are within the ancient world. Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Shintoism, um, Taoism, Confucianism, Zoroasterism, everybody in all of the religions worldwide taught, all right, that the object of life on earth is to transform the human body into a immortal vehicle of life. Right. The Book of Mari contains a song which, when sung properly, begins the transformation process of the human body into a vessel of life. The Essenes, which some say John the Baptist and Jesus was part of the Essenes. This is metaphysical, of course, because the word Essenes means essence. The culture of the Middle East had a similar song to which they were sung at a solar ritual or ceremony, a liturgy. When combined with certain solar practices, these sounds led to the transformation process, giving you your light body. Okay, so this here to the left is the body of light mantra. Jagad, Bumi, Alam, Kabi, Sumu, Supa, Marang, Ba, Dan, 
by Dan Sumu, Supa, Marang, Budi, Budi, Suma, Supa, Marang, Nyawa, Nyawa, Sumu, Supa, Marang, Rasa, Rasa, Sumu, Supa, Marang, Kaya, Kaya, Sumu, Pa, Marang, Atma, Atma, Sumu, Pa, Marang, Dot, Dot, Sumu, Pa, Marang, In Song, In Song, Jamming, Prad, Body, Ampa, Tambang, Gang, Tapa, Lawanging, Anwana, Ing, Kalara, Ting, Sun, Ting, Maha, Mulia, Muha, Susi, Sieti, Soko, Ing, Ang, Dating, Sung, so learning this, this is the body of light mantra. So learning this and reciting this along with, as we just went over, Om Ha Hung Vajra Guru Padmi Siddhi Hung, or as some say, um, Jewel in the Lotus, Om, um, Om Mari Padmi Hum, Om Mari Padmi Hum, Om Mari Padmi Hum, Om Mari Padmi Hum. You can also do the Om Mari Padmi Hum. In ancient Egypt, Babak Banu is transformed into a fiery bird. This is the same as when um, they said that um, when Jesus found out that he was the son of God, and he realized that the, the dove came down over his head. All right? So, Babak Banu, which means the soul is transformed into a fiery bird, symbolizes the dove or the eagle or the hawk or the phoenix. It symbolizes the rebirth of the spirit through the Holy Spirit, the Shekinah dove, the protection of the soul through the eagle, and awakening of the body, spirit, and soul through the phoenix power of resurrection. So, this mantra is sung at the pace of the heartbeat. So if your heartbeat is do 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 ba back benu 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 all right so that also helps to elevate you until eventually you become a light body, all right, rainbow body, as you see here, is actually um, is the Lama Acho Ren um, Pachu, all right. All right. So here, right, manifests the rainbow body. This is somebody to First Corinthians fifteen fifty two in the twinkling or in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump. All right, we're in the last trump right now. We're in the Trump administration. This symbolizes that. All right, from the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. So even though the word rapture isn't mentioned in the Holy Bible, the act is mentioned in various world religions. So this is actually the rapture. They're talking about that. Um, they were seen, but then they was not seen any longer because you were able to transform your body into light. And you no longer had to stay trapped into the physical world. You was able to soar and move through wormholes. All right? You become the UFO. You were able to transform your body into light. All right? Um, Japal um, Shinian um, obtained the body of light near um, the Bodhagaya in India. Sri um, Singja um, obtained the body of light near the um, say, yeah, cremation grounds of central China. Um, Vimal Lamitria obtained the body of light in Kashmir. Um, 
Janana Sutra obtained the body of light near the um, basin, um, basin um, cremation grounds in northern India. So we know that at least 100,000 people have obtained the rainbow body, all right? All right, some say as high as 250,000. All right, but they say 100,000 because it symbolizes the 144,000. This is really what the 144,000 really means. And you can become that, right? You can become the 144,000. When you start seeing the numbers 144, that gives you your clue that you are on your right path. Okay? So the great religions, most of the world teaches that the human body can be transformed into a higher state of being. St. Paul called it um, celestial body or spiritual body. Christianity referred to it as the state of re resurrection body. Hinduism referred to it as the state of the Vajra body. All right? That's what we just call it on the Vajra, right? Um, Buddhism refers to it as the state of the Buddha body. Tibetan Buddhism referred to it as the state of the Jalus. Um, Indonesian Islam referred to it as the state of the body of light. The Nazarene, the seen order refers to the state of the rainbow robe of light. This is the robe in which that was, um, the rainbow robe that was taken from um, Joseph, who actually is um, Imhotep of the third dynastic period, which is based on the real individual. Uh, moderate Islam refers to the state as the diamond body, right? The Vajra body also is referred to as the, um, the antimantium body. And of course, we hear the term antimatium when we think of Wolverine in X in um, X Men. He has an um, antimantium body, but this is the real thing: is that you transform your body into light, not no goddamn comic book. Okay, so right here, fourteen. But some men will say, "How are the dead risen up? And what's the body? Did they come?" Thou fool, that which thou saw of is not quickened, it dies. And that which thou saw of not that their body shall be, but bare gains. And there may chance of wheat and of some grain. But God giveth it a body as he pleaseth, and every seed his own body. And all flesh is not the same flesh, but that is one kind of flesh of man, and another kind of flesh of beast, another of fish, and another of birds. There are also celestial bodies and body terrestrial. But the glory of the celestial is one, and the glory of the terrestrial is another. All right? So there's two bodies. You have your physical body, which is just a terrestrial, which is a glory within itself because it's the body of God. But then you have your celestial body, which is the incorruptible, which is the resurrection body, which is the Vajra body, which is the spiritual body, which is the Jalus body, which is the Buddha body, which is the body of light, which is the diamond body. There is one the glory of the sun and another the glory of the moon, another the glory of the stars, and one star differs from another star in glory. You get it? They just told you the science. One star differs in glory from another star. Because you're supposed to become a star. When you, go, when you leave this world, you go back to the astral plane, which means the star plane. So you become a little twinkle star anyway. But you want to become a big twinkle star with no ending consciousness, so when you pass physical form, you resurrect, your consciousness is intact, and you can damn come back and go into other worlds as you please. You become a living God. If you want to have a physical body, you can materialize a physical body. Materialize and dematerialize at will. And rematerialize at will. No longer having to worry about death, because remember I told you, the sciences is that way. Your auric field or astral star body, the higher astral body, spiritual body as it's called, is eternal. It's the equivalent of the lifetime of the universe, which is about 10 e 22 years. So that means you can leave, um, live the rest of your life. All right? And that's just in this universe. Because once we get enough people resurrected in this universe, Guess what? We can form another universe. <laughs> and you continue into that universe. 
but you continue with all the lifetimes of your memory because you have now incorporated all your oversouls into your lifetime. All right, when you become a star, you have incorporated all your previous lives, um, um, all your previous incarnations, reincarnation into that lifetime. In other words, you, you no longer um, is there a separation in consciousness. You remember everything, all things, all your experiences, all your lifetimes. It's what it means by where, oh, death is your victory. Right? He says, so also is the resurrection of the dead. It is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It is sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It is sown in weakness, it is raised in power. It is sown a natural body, but it is raised in the spiritual body. There is a natural body and there is a spiritual body. And so it is written, the first Adam was made a living soul. The last Adam was made a quickened spirit. How be it that we're not first, which is spiritual, but that which is natural. And afterwards, that which is spirit or spiritual. The first man is of the earth, earthly. The second man is of the Lord from heaven. As the earthly, such as they are they are earthly, and is the heavenly, such as also that are heavenly. And we have bore the image of earth, image of earthly, and we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. So this is true resurrection that we're talking about. We ain't talking about a mystery, a mystery story of 2,000 years ago. That 2,000-year-old story, we're talking about your resurrection, as you are the sons and daughters of God just as Jesus was the son of God. Not waiting for Jesus to come back, no damn 105 years old, talking about Jesus coming to get you. That nigga had other things to do. All right? You better be there getting your damn shit up like him and getting the hell up out of here and becoming a light body, a star, a sun, Hence the sun or the light of the world. So when you're talking about where, O oh, death, is your victory, now this is say, brother, the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Neither does corruption inherit in corruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We, all, um, we shall not all sleep, but we shall be all changed in a twinkling. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, the trumpet shall sound, sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. All right, now, Christians believe that this is happening on one day sometime in the near future, because they always keep talking about the last days, the last days, the damn last days, the day when you die. That's your damn last day. <laughs> and that's your last day on this planet, right, in that fleshly body. However, if you're working like what we're talking about doing within three to seven days, you can resurrect into a glorified light body and become immortal. This is what this is saying. From this corruption, put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when the corruption shall be put on incorruption and the mortal shall be put on immortality, there shall um, brought to pass the saying and the writing, death is swallowed up in victory. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. All right? But thanks be to God who giveth us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, where is the Lord Jesus Christ? The Lord Jesus Christ is inside of you. Right? In 2 Corinthians, it speaks of Jesus Christ being inside of you. All right? That is talking about some... High metaphysical esoteric information. Once a person becomes a light being, he or she may at times return to earth in order to teach others. The body of light is immortal and requires neither food, water, nor air for its sustenance. Ooh, that's how you swallow that bitch up. That's how you swallow death up. You get it? This is the highest information on the planet that I'm teaching you tonight. There's nothing higher. Everything else is a distraction. In ancient Egypt, it was called the luminous being. Tree, 
wrote um, Bindu, an Indian teacher and mystic, stated that the divine body is the ultimate stage of human evolution. He felt that a deathless condition results from um, transubstantiation of the fleshly body can be obtained by personal effort, meditation, and divine grace. All right? The seed of immortal form are said to exist within each of us. Okay, that is the science. All right? So the secret was shared by many ancient cultures, including the, the Kothas, um, the Aztecs, the Incas, the Mayan, the, which is actually the Omex, because the Omex bought them, because that, that um, Incas, Aztecs, and Mayans were their children. So that came from the Omex. The Essenes, the ancient Egyptians, um, the Bunpo, the Taoists, Taoists, the um, Tib ancient Tibetans, the Indonesia, the scores of other countries or uh, cultures, I should say, um, shared this secret. The secret, the secret is that death is not the only option. We thought that, oh, you, oh, you, oh, you pay taxes, you black, and you die. Really? But well, goddamn, no one. I got both of them paid already. I'm a Moor, so I don't go buy black, and I don't pay taxes. <laughs> Oh shit, then that means that this death thing, I'm definitely going to be. <laughs> so, death is not the only option. The human body has the ability to transform into pure light. Albert Einstein became famous for proving that matter and energy are the same. He proved that matter may be transformed into energy. He also showed that energy may be transformed back into matter through his what? Now, famous equation E equals MC squared. Energy equals mass per constant speed of light. I didn't make this shit up. Albert Einstein did. <laughs> or rather, he gave you the secret light body. The body of light, rainbow body of light, Jalus, is obtained at the time of death by the means of track court practice. The track chart, um, um, the track chart practice is basically what we just went over. The body of light mantra, and also Om Ha Hong, Vajra Guru, Padme Siddhi Hong. That is what they're talking about. So, what is the rainbow body? A fully enlightened person, a Javan Mukti, who also liberates the body into light. Now, there are three levels of the rainbow body. I'm trying to reach the highest damn level. You have A, the rainbow body, you have B, the rainbow body of light, and you have C, the rainbow body of great transference. The most common level is the normal rainbow body that occurs, all right? As a matter of fact, let's, let's blow it up so everybody can see this. Y'all got to see this. All right? So the most common level is the normal rainbow body that occurs over um, only after death, right? Every 10 years or so, a Buddhist from Tibet enters into this state. There are no physical signs indicating the start of the process before death. And once physical death occurs, it takes an average seven days. Right? This is why the number seven is so powerful and the reason why more is used the number seven. Right? They think it's just about the seven chakras. No, it's about the seven days after you master this, in this information and these energies. For the body to shrink and dissolve into light. And most of the time, a small, um, child-sized body remains behind in a more advanced yogi, only hair and nails. So you have the nails, the fingernails, and your toenails, and your hair. That's what remains. You don't need it. The more advanced level is also called the rainbow body, but for a due purpose, let's call it the rainbow body of light. And at this level, all the signs are showing up while the yogi is still alive. Right? That's what I'm trying to do. Fuck death. The process of dissolving into light might go really fast. But in most cases, it may take months to years to complete. 
all the while remaining fully functional. It is also possible that the yogi who is in the middle of this process slow it down and is unable to continue the process or die before the completion of the rainbow body. This has been the case with most of the famous Siddhas. If the process is continued, the body will start to shrink and shine real light over time until it reaches the size of a baby and then a flash of light rainbow body will disappear into emptiness forever. Right? The most advanced and extremely rare level is the attainment of the rainbow body at great transference. In this level, the yogi may only dissolve the body completely into light but remain functional and visible as light. That's what I'm talking about. In this level, the yogi not only dissolves the body completely, that's hair, nails, and toenails. Fingernails and toenails. Completely into light, but remains functional and visible as light. Right? These are the three highest levels of obtaining the rainbow body. Right? I want the highest. Sorry. Come here. Come here. Come here. So, right, according to um, the Zach Chan literature, Zach Chan is the highest and most um, def um, definitive path to enlightenment. You have the Trek Talk on um, practice, is a releasing or cutting through all the tensions and rigidities. All obscurities must be um, purified. This accomplished through mastering the art of contemplation and visualization. It is mastering meditation in the state of union. It is a prerequisite for the practice of togo practice. For novice understanding, it is the practice of witnessing one's karma and forgiving and dissolving it to the point that it holds no power of cause. The physical body will be calm to a death-like state of what is called Sedmahati. Now, what is all of this talking about? Well, everybody keep talking about 666, right? Because 666 is melanin. That's the mark of the beast. Six electrons, six neutrons, six protons. That's the book of Revelation 13, 18. It says, here is wisdom. Let him that has understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is 603 scores and six. Okay. That's carbon, right? What is called carbon 12, 666. You don't want to stay at 666. Carbon is what is called condensed starlight. I'm going to say it again. Oh, Carbon yes. is condensed starlight, which is condensed universal blackness. Cosmic oh. rays, which is condensed infinity blackness of light. So your melanin is the condensation of all light, which is comes in a dark form, which is actually stardust. And cosmic radiation, which is ultraviolet light, can actually re can activate through photonic emissions and the interactions with your electronic body and transform you back into a light body. Good God Almighty. Genesis 1, 26 says, And God said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image, and the image of God created he, him, male and female created he, them. And God said, Everything that he made, and behold, it was very good. And the evening and the morning was the sixth day. So Adam and Eve was made on the sixth day, symbolic to carbon, which is the sixth element on the periodical chart. Coincidence? I think not. <laughs> so, we talked about how many electrons is in the body? Well, there's approximately 7E27, 
or 27 zeros after the seven of atoms in the human body. So you have 76 trillion cells, and you have 70, 27 atoms in your body from those 76 trillion cells. What you find out is that 99.9999% of your atomic structure, of your, of your atoms, are empty space. But it's in that what it appears to be space is the most violent chaotic potential energy. Potential energy. And you are supposed to utilize the energies of the cosmos in order to make it vibrate to a higher level. An atom consists of a small positively charged nucleus surrounded by clouds and negatively charged electrons. Remember, you're activating the electrons. Yes. Electron is a tiny elementary particle that carries a negative electrical charge. Originally, electrons current is the flow of electrons. Um, elect excuse me, ordinary electric current is the flow of electrons through a wire or other conductor. So electrons can be what? Utilized as electric current. That's what is on top of the shells of each atom or electrons. So the more photon energy can act, interact with those seven E27 atoms in your body, you become electrified <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <laughs> So as more cosmic solar radiation, solar winds into the earth, nitrogen converts carbon or converts to carbon 14. Carbon 7, um, carbon 12 converts to carbon 7. And DNA of carbon dominated people will change. So children of the sun, now is your time to shine. DNA is also organic superconductor that can work at normal body temperatures as opposed to artificial superconductors which require extremely low temperatures between negative 200 and negative 140 Celsius to function. In addition, all superconductors are able to store light and trans and thus information. This further explains how DNA can store information. So when they talk about the, the burning bush, that's talking about your DNA, your nervous system, your brain. That was your burning bush, because as the Kundalini is 6,000 degrees in temperature, and it can go through your body and don't burn you up. So hence, it's just like the burning bush that talked about that Moses scene when he was speaking to God. So you were supposed to transform from carbon 12 to carbon 7, right? Carbon 12, 666 is the rule of the devil. Carbon 7 is the rule of, is the rule of God. Because number seven is the, is, is the number in which that they tell you about, which is seven equals G. And G is in the center of the compass and square within Freemasonry. And G is the seventh letter in the alphabet. And G symbolizes for God. Everybody know that seven is God's number. So carbon seven is the material equivalent of Kundalini system. Such as will, um, as well as the Metatron cube. Right, the Metatron cube is actually is your um, macabre, which I'll get to that in a second. Like iron has the ability to sustain a magnetic field around it, carbon-7 has the uncanny ability to carry hyperdimensional fields, such as fields of thought around it. it this thus can it be amplified thought in other hyperdimensional fields, just as iron and copper in a transformer can amplify magnetic fields. Naturally, it is formed in the brains of spiritual adepts. When they have out-of-body experiences or, trans or perform other supernatural phenomena, such as biolocation and materialization, etc. During such times, the glow and the halo that is formed around the heads of the highly evolved beings is actually due to the excessive neutrons produced within carbon-12 transmutants transmutes to carbon-7 inside their brains, pineal gland or DMT, which is, um, which we'll get to. 
during the human being's experience, the brain is being saturated with DMT, right, which is dimethyltryptamine and penoline. These chemicals are secreted by the pineal gland, also known as the seat of the soul. It's also known as the seat of the soul. When this chemical reacts happens, the brain is literally being awakened as one begins the human experience. So according to Blackout Through White Watch by Dr. Suzar, she says Dr. Frank Ball pioneered discovery that melanin organizes ability and other properties. Once his technical uh, work, melanin, the organizing molecule, the, hype, um, the hypothesis right, is activated that um, is advanced that the neuromelanin in conjunction with the pigment molecules such as isopentenoids functions as the major organizational molecule in the living systems. Melanin is depicted as an organ, organ, um, organ, um, organizational trigger capable of using established properties such as photons, electrons, photon conversions. This is what we're talking about, the conversions. Free radical redox mechanisms, ion exchange mechanisms, and ion exchange mechanisms, and semiconductive switching capabilities to direct energy to strat strategic molecule systems and sensitive hierarchies of protein enzymes cascades. Melanin is held capable of regulating a wide range of molecule or molecular interactions and metabolic processes. Now, all that to say that basically melanin has its own DNA, it's the most important substance in the human body, carbon atom links to form melanin, which has black hole properties, wormholes properties, right, which are found in space. In physics, the melanated body has the capability to be a perfect absorber and perfect radiator of all forms of life, of light and energy. So this is the science behind melanin, all right? So you have a perfect body because you have the perfect absorber and the perfect radiator of all forms of light and energy. Melanin may be viewed as a battery that is partially charged and can always accept an electrical charge. This is why you do Qigong, Tai Chi, Reiki, Pranic energy. Energy modality work is because when sunlight and other energies come in contact with the melanin battery, it increases the charge of the battery to a certain degree. Right? So how can you get a greater degree? Well, get the books, The Science of Melanin, Dispelling the Myths by um, Dr. Tim Owen Moore, PhD, good brother. All right? I know him personally and have interviewed him. I love this brother. You know what I'm saying? He's brilliant. He's also the professor at Federal State University over the um, psych um, psychology um, department. Right? But in his book, The Science of Melanin, he wrote, in the third dimension, melanin acts as a semiconductor to transform energy. You don't want it to be semi. Right? Semi is halfway. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no, it ain't no half stepping like Big Daddy Kane said. Right? So the unk, the African origin of electromagnetism by Nur Ankh Amin, this is Nur Ankh Amin to the left here. As a semi, this is what he writes, as a semiconductor, melanin has an energy gap. So when it operates in the third dimension, it, it, there's an energy gap. So you must learn how to operate in the fourth dimension, which is dealing with time. If you deal with the fifth dimension, then you're dealing with energy, right? The third dimension is length, width, and height. That's the third dimension. When you add depth, which is time and space, then that becomes the fourth dimension. When you add spirit to it, that's energy, which is the fifth dimension. All right? So in order to fill in that gap, which is your melanin, this energy gap in melanin, working at a semiconductor on the third dimension, you must tap into higher dimensional energies. Fourth dimension, fifth dimension energies. The absorption of energy is required before the electrons can jump into the conduction band and make melanin conductive. And increase in conductivity increases the sensitivity of melanin to the electromagnetic world of etheric beings, astral projections, and spiritual entities. At low frequencies, the conduction 
the conductivity of melanin is small. But at ultra high frequency, now remember, like on the back of the TV back in the days, many don't remember this because you might be too young. So you don't remember when you had to turn the TV channel, actually get up off your ass off the couch and turn it without the remote control. And then sometimes you had to put the, um, on the rabbit ear antennas, you had to put the tin for you or aluminum around the top so you can pick a better frequency. Right. Better um, um, frequency, for better, cha better channels. But from channel 2 to channel 13 was what's called VHF, very high frequency. So you right. can't reach that state in very high frequency. You had to go to UHF, which was the channel U, which was from channel 14 to channel 83. And the, ch and the own channel was the, um, and the own antenna was the, uh, was the what tapped you into those channels. And if you notice, that the ohm channel was like the top part of this unk here, right? Which is called chin, which means spirit within ancient Egypt, and it means spirit within the Orient, in particular in China. So shin, all right, um, which is called the ohm antenna, and it's no coincidence that it's called the ohm antenna as it was round and it was the channel on the back of the TV, that was the ohm antenna, antenna, all right? And that tapped into ultra high frequency. UHF means ultra high frequency. So now melanin is a superconductor. So when you have ultraviolet light, which is symbolic to ultra high frequency, come down into you, those photons electrify the electrons. And then there's a, 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 a mass transference, back and forth reaction that takes place that can help transform your body into a body of light. Enhancing your auric field. God damn it. The maximum current flow only on the skin due to the skin effects at melanin UHF resonant frequencies. Because melanin on the skin is the most important substance in the human body. This is why when they talk about um, all these metaphysical things and don't never talk about melanin, oh, I'm like, oh, okay, you're a lying ass motherfucker. <laughs> I don't know how I can. I don't know how I can believe you because you're not mentioning the most important substance in the body. Anyway, Dr. Carl Margaret, right? This is what he says: the living matrix in the body. Living matrix is an energetic communication system. It conducts packets of energy and information instead of nerve impulses. Cells are all interconnected through integrins and light communication. Skin is the entry point into the conductive tissue living matrix. The same thing that we just said. The electrons are on the top, is on the skin. That's where the maximum current flow is only on the skin due to the skin effects. So electron revolves around an atomic nuclei in the energy level. So photons revolves around electronic nuclei. And when they are subject to energy, they are emitted as electromagnetic energy in waves. The effects of which depends on their motion. For the possible effects, glances at the chart of the electromagnetic spectrum. All right? The effects may be anywhere from heat on the far left through radio waves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet light, X-rays to high energy gamma rays. The melanin absorbs all of that. All right? Your electrons via your melanin absorbs all of those energy levels. Professor Fritz Albert Pops, this is what he says. We know today that man essentially is a being of light. This is what he says. The moderate science of photobiology is presently proving this. In terms of healing, the implications are immense. We now know, for example, that the quantum of light can initiate or arrest cascade-like reactions in the cells, and the genetic cellular damage can be virtually repaired within hours by faint beams of light, which once again is called biophotons. Living light. That's what biophoton means. Bio means living. Photon means a height. Living light. We are still in the threshold of fully understanding the complex relationship between light and life. But we now say emphatically that the function of our entire um, metabolism <clears throat> is dependent on light. 
All right? So, and basically, your entire being is based on light. It's dependent on light. And I understand, all right? It might be complex, but I understand the relationship between light and life. All right? It's real simple. You are hologram. <laughs> all 76 trillion cells in your body, if I was able to take one cell, one flake of skin, one strand of hair, one speck of blood, one dribble of saliva, I can clone a whole nother you of your ad of you into existence. All right? That's what I can do. And that's called cloning. So in order for a hologram to live, what must it need? Anybody? Well, how oh, wow. to live or to exhibit as a, be to be a hologram, you must need light. Right. So your whole being reacts off the of light. He goes further on. He says he declares that the human organism is not only a carnivorous or vegetarian being, but also a consumer of light. In fact, it behaves like a lumivarious creature. You are a lumivarious creature. I know you've been told that you came from apes and monkeys and shit. You went to school, you went to college, spent $20,000 to get told that you came from monkeys and shit in, 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 in uh, biology class. Why they weren't dealing with this information from this level? This is integrative biophysics by um, Professor Fritz Albert Pox, where he says this in, that we behave like lumivarious creatures. What do you mean by lumivarious? Well, let's find out. In other words, earlier on in our earthly development, we were light vampires. Right? That's what I refer to it as. There are still many conscious ones now. In other words, any melanated or any melanite that applies the teachings of Kundalini Yoga, Tantra, Kriya Yoga, Reiki, Pranic Energy, Healing, Qigong, Tai Chi, Aikido, Wing Chun, or etc. Or actually light vampires. This, however, a difference between a light vampire, which is a pranic intaker, and a psychic vampire, which is a pranic drainer. The light vampire absorbs energy with permission consciously from the earth, air, food, water, sun, and cosmos universe. While on the other hand, the psychic vampire does not ask permission and is oftentimes unconscious or unaware of themselves, draining other people's energy. And of course, they're all conscious psychic vampires as well. Right? It's called incubus and succubus, especially if you are um, in the dream world and you feel um, like energy being drained in the morning time upon waking up. Upon waking up. Right? So, as you see here, to the left, you see the god Ra, right? He's stowing his life-giving rays upon the face and the head and the pineal gland of the woman who was holding her hands up with the car symbol, which symbolizes spirit. So she is receiving the spirit of Ra. Well, you receive the spirit of Ra every day too. Direct cosmic energy, sunlight, through the breath, cosmic energy, electromagnetic energy, full spectrum of energy assimilation. Before meditation, your aura might be weak. After meditation, it's strong, especially if you do this three, um, 6363 three breath technique, 7171 breath technique, or the empty retention um, technique, which I talk about all the time, which is called pranic healing. And if you do that 100 times, then your aura field will expand dramatically. If you want to do it 100 times, once again, get your prayer beads. And this will help you.
So you can count with your prayer beads 100 times. All right? So remember, we're, our physical bodies are more than 90% stardust particles. Well, guess what? More than 40,000 tons of cosmic dust falls to the earth daily, and it affects you and me. Get the book, Living with the Stars, right, by Karel um, um, Shriverjir and Iris um, um, Sherib, um, Sherib right? And it says this. Uh, I can't say if I pronounced it correctly, but we, hey, we're working at it. Right here, in the infrared image, stellar winds from a giant star cause interstellar dust to form ripples. Thus a, lot, thus a whole lot of dust when contain oxygen, which contains oxygen, carbon, iron, nickel, and all the other elements out there. And eventually some of it finds its way into our bodies. Oh, it does, huh? Hmm. Could this be the reason why they're putting up chemtrails into the sky, which has aluminum in it, and aluminum is a reflective agent? Take a piece of aluminum out. Take a piece of aluminum um, from your runner's wrap and take it out into the sun and then um, place it before the sun rays and see what happens. You'll block out the rays of the sun. Wow. <laughs> So aluminum is used in the chemtrails to block out the rays of the sun in order to keep you from getting and receiving this 40,000 tons of cosmic dust that falls to the earth. That affects you and me. Why would they do such a thing? Well, so scientists concluded that the temperature increases every year starting since 1930. And that in 2000, it went up to 58.0 from the 1800s, 56.5, a little over that, more like 56.6. And then all of a sudden, it's just jumped since the 1930s. And it jumped really in the, since the 1980s. And I really seen the jump when some of the warmest years on record was in the 1990s. Seen that it's still jumping. So we see that the Earth resonance was at one time 8, 7.83 hertz. In some places, it has jumped beyond 14 hertz. Double, nearly double what it used to be. So the Earth resonance, or what is called the Schumann resonance, has increased dramatically also, along with the warming of atmosphere. Now this correlates to Malachi, the fourth chapter, the second verse, where it says that the Son of Rising will come with healing in his wings, and all those who act as stubble will be burned like an oven, like fire in an oven. This, so, so this hotness that is coming is spoke about in Malachi 4 too. And here it is, solar activity and its effects on Earth. Poly, um, um, particles drawn to the poles and collide with the atmosphere, causing polar lights. So they don't want you to get this light. Like oh. God with the chemtrails. But the light is supposed to help what? Change your DNA. Change the carbon 12 to carbon 7. And you can transform into a light being. The sun, solar flares, and eruption. Billions of tons of star of super hot gas contain charged particles. This is what is sent to us to the planet Earth from the sun. So we are all well, well aware that the solar flares set in flashes of brightness that are gases eruption from the sun exists. They're called corona mass ejections or CMEs. And given the power of the sun, we can probably all understand that when they release energy, it's tremendously hot, high energy particles and gas surface of the sun, able to eject thousands of miles from the surface of the sun, 
In fact, the amount of energy um, it takes for a flare to shoot out is equivalent to approximately 160 billion megatons of TNT. In other words, intense. However, do you know that at the um, that as the cosmic energy intensifies, as cosmic winds and flares interact with the Earth's electromagnetic fields, that we are also affected? Humans have electromagnetic fields running around their bodies, which is why grounding works so well and is so important. And others believe surrounding them call auras as well. And that, that means that the same way electromagnetic energies affects our planet, it can also affect us. So see, they're trying to stop the effects of it. During solar flare 11 through 22 years activity, when during these high activities of solar flares, super flares, and mega flares, from, it jumps from 40,000 tons to actually 300,000 tons of stardust energy or particles that falls to the planet of daily. And now with that much, that much more energy falling to the planet Earth, you're supposed to absorb your share as being a melanated being. Remember, your melanin has wormhole or black hole capabilities. A human cell contains 20 billion exponential bits of information. Therefore, humans originally were created with body cells capable of consuming and absorbing 90% of the cosmic forces and light to which they were exposed. However, our cells began to deteriorate to 10% capability of consumption and absorption when we began to expand and lose our sexual energy. Eat chemical GMO food, drink fluoride water, and stay inside the house more, etc. So when you go on to the sun, you want to say this chant, Ranetter Atef Nefer, Ranetter Atef Nefer, Ra, Netter, Atef, Nefer, Ah, Netter, Afet, Atef, Nefer. So what that means, it means God, sun rays, and nature are gracious to me. This is a mantra that is designed to draw towards the user the life-giving warmth of the sun and the protection power over the lower self or lower nature or lower mind. In other words, it takes you into your higher mind. Ra, Netter, Ra, Netter. Sun God, Atif, Nefer, or good. All right? So um, the Sun God is all good. <laughs> That's what that means. All right? So we are energy and light beings. Our cells contain light illuminating from dullness to, bright to brightness, toxic food, thoughts, negative thoughts, negative relationships. Negative environment dims our light. But kindness, gratitude, whole foods, and passion brightens our light. So let your light shine. So when Christians sing the old spiritual hymn, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Well, let it shine, damn it. This is the science of what we're talking about here. All right, so how to increase your spiritual vibration, your mind and body? Meditation. You meditate. Show gratitude and appreciation. You give help to others. Stop watching TV. Think your own thoughts. Be independent, free thinker. Spend time in nature. Stretch more. In other words, do yoga. Yoga. Deep your body. We have herbs on our site in which that deals with detoxing of the body. Mucus cleanser or removal. Because that's what Dr. Sape says, that there's only one disease, and that's mucus in your body. That's come, that has become solidified. Ingest plants as food, medicines. One of the best foods or plants is dandelion, in particular dandelion leaves. Dandelion roots can be used um, in exchange for coffee in the morning. The 6363 breath, the 7171 breath, the empty retention breath. If you get initiated to the um, Cobra Mysteries, 
Then the cobra breath technique. There's many, many breaths. Get the book, The Science of Breath. Yeah. yeah. Get the book, um, The Science of Pranayama. I get my book out of the womb, into the mind. Relax. Get enough sleep. At least six to eight hours of sleep every night. Walk barefooted if you can in the space where there's not dogs and cows and pigs and all that shit at. You know, we won't get worms in your feet. Right? Work a job that you love. Find a passion and build on it. Eat minerals and enzymes, rich organic fruits and vegetables, and concentrate green powders, chlorella. Hell, I got mine right here. Super greens, right here, right next to me. I'm getting ready to crack this shit open right now in a second and get some more. All right? <laughs> and what it Everything that they're saying, wheatgrass, alfalfa, spirulina, kale, beets, berries, barley, green, um, um, aloe, um, pomegranates, um, apple, pectin, um, flaxseed, coca, all right, um, mushrooms, probiotics, and more. Over 50 organic superfoods is in here. All right? So that's what it's saying. Fresh on raw, pressed organic oil, like hemp and olive oils, all right? Stress less. Learn uh, proper breathing techniques and start meditating. That's what we just talked about. Connect with, uh, with nature daily. That's what we just talked about. We're walking barefoot. Clear the mind with positive affirmations and prayers. Hakaus, words of power. Avoid all junk food. Eat um, algae and herbs and infuse yourselves with daily green juices. And it's true. That's the best the best thing that you can do for your health. Connect with your inner child. Make art and be creative. Quit smoking and drinking alcohol. Dance more. You know, get rid of fear. Worry. Learn to love. Learn how to love instead of hate. This is what is taught within, you know, within the Moral Science Temple, even though they don't follow it. Most of them don't. They're too busy fussing at each other, trying to find, trying to um, talk about who's right and who's wrong. I don't give a fuck. I'm worrying about Starbody. I leave all that arguing shit up to um, the simple-minded ones, the mundane. That's what they, that's what they locked at. They're not locked on the higher self. That's lower self. Or that ego. Only thing I care about is getting the fuck out of here. That's, that's my goal. Might not be yours. You might want to be here. Come back again. 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 <laughs> Your choice. <laughs> not mine. So, we find out that the only difference between melanin in a human being and chlorophyll in plants is one magnesium molecule. Both of them do the same thing, which is called photosynthesis, which is a process which plants and other organisms convert light energy into chemical energy. They can later be used to release fuel the organism's activities, which is called energy transformation. Oh, shit, I think I just explained this to you. The simplest way is through what is called photosynthesis. Is a process used by plants and other organisms, i.e. you, human being, to convert light energy into chemical energy that can later be released to fuel the organism's activities. Energy transformation. So you want to learn how to do energy transformation. Here's plant chlorophyll, magnesium at the center, human blood hemoglobin, iron at the center. It is identical. Only I, the only difference is you have iron, the plant has magnesium. So you can't manufacture magnesium in your body any longer. So what you do, you, take, you eat lots of green leafy vegetables that has chlorophyll in it, spirulina, corella, such as kale, um, um, kale uh, spinach, et cetera, et cetera, and take magnesium. 
supplements. Guess what that does? You won't have high blood pressure and you won't have diabetes. High blood pressure and diabetes come from not having enough mag mag um, magnesium in your body. Oh, the clue in the science on how to heal that shit. That's it. Magnesium. 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 Yep, magnesium. Only thing you need is 450 milligrams a day. No diabetes, no high blood pressure, no strokes. No heart attacks. You just cured yourself from four of the most deadliest diseases known to man with magnesium supplements, with eating plant filled, chlorophyll, um, um, heavily chlorophyll plant food. Spinach has a lot of magnesium in it. It also has a lot of iron in it. This is why they showed you Popeye getting strong for me in spinach. I'm Popeye in a salad, man. Doo -doo. It's spinach. <laughs> Kale spinach. Kale spinach. Olive oil, give me that can of spinach. <laughs> spinach. <laughs> yeah. Kale. I'm strong to the finish because I eat my spinach. <laughs> that was no bullshit. <laughs> That's real. That's real. So you juice spinach with an apple and kale in the morning. You straight. Drink that as soon as you get that, as soon as you finish blending it up in a blender or juicer. I'd rather use a blender because it keeps the fiber content. While juicing gets rid of the fiber content, which causes an increase in the glycemic condition within a person. In other words, it makes your sugar high. But if you keep it as in a blender, the fiber is still there, and therefore it gets absorbed. The sugars get absorbed properly, especially with the high content of magnesium, which helps with sugar absorption. Blender. And the doctors know this, but they won't tell you why don't you they won't tell you why don't you just increase your magnesium intake? You're deficient of magnesium. That's why you have heart issues. That's why you have um stroke um um high blood pressure which leads to stroke, diabetes. Because you don't have enough magnesium, along with chromium and barium, in particular if you have diabetes. It's a magnesium deficiency. Because the body don't produce magnesium, so you have to get large amounts of magnesium through your food. They don't tell you that's a mineral deficiency. So here's the human body of light once again, energetic factors. It says this is the main function of sunlight that humans are about, which humans are most knowledgeable. The aspect of sunlight carries the electromagnetic spectrum and certain nurturing energy frequencies that are capable of sustaining life. So right there, that's the link between life and light. All of the elements that are necessary for life emanates originally from the sun, water, Air, fire, earth, and all of the necessary nutrients of life come, came to us from the sun. Each and every second, billions of tons of matter are released from the sun and hurls toward the planets. This form the basis for all life in our solar system. So, if there's tons of energy that is released from the sun and it comes hurling towards the planet, you as melanated beings are supposed to take in your shit because it says what? The energetic factors that the sun release are capable of sustaining life all on their own. So when we just showed you 
the solar flare activity coming towards the Earth and particles drawn to the poles and collide with the atmosphere causing polar lights, and then billions of tons of, of super hot gas contains charged particles. Remember, these charged particles are supposed to fill in the gaps of your melanin. Because now you are absorbing what? Now you are absorbing ultra-high frequencies. You get it? So here, chapter 2, Education of Miriam and Elizabeth and Zoan from the Holy Quran, Circle 7, it says, And you must teach your sons and set their souls on fire with love and holy zeal and make them conscious of their mission to the sons of men. Now, read right before that to set 16. Let's read from there. We call these sons revealers of light. But they must have the light before they can reveal the light. Mm, well, this is God is light. If you go to First John 1, 5, it says, then, and This then is the message which we have heard from him and declared unto you that God is light. And him is no darkness at all. John 1, 9, it said, There is the true light, which lighteth every man to come, that cometh into the world, into this world, into the world, excuse me. Then you have Jesus is the light. John 8, 12, then he spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world, and he that followed me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. You go light in life again. You are light. Uh-oh, first, um, the lotions, 5, 5, ye are the children of the light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. All right? So we are the children of the light and children of the day. We are the children of the sun. We are beings of light. We know today that man essentially is a being of light. And the moderate science of bio, um, photobiology is presently proving this. In terms of healing, the implications are immense. We now know, for example, that the quantum of light can initiate. So light can initiate you or arrest cascade-like reactions in the cells. Right, that genetic cellular damage can be virtually repaired within hours by faint beams of light. So, what if you learn how to utilize your healing powers and visualize light upon a person, which is taught with the impranic healing, which we're going to teach in the next class? But at first, I got to teach you that you are light, being so that you know how to channel the light, because it just said that we call these revealers of the light, but they must have the light before they can reveal the light. You must teach your sons and set their souls on fire with love and holy zeal and make them conscious of their mission to the sons of man. All right? All right. So here we have examples of the size of the sun and the size of the, of the, um, size of the sun and the size of the earth. And just imagine these gigantic solar flares coming off of the sunspot areas at 19.5 degrees on the sun. If I took a tetrahedron, six-point star, um, um, star, and overlaid it over the sun at 19.5 degrees, there would be an upswelling of energy at the sunspot area in which that would show the upswelling of energy in which that would show you the, um, the, um, right, the, um, the raising up of um, CMEs, corona mass ejections, or solar flare activity, super flares, mega flares. Here's an example of how the sun can heal, because here goes um, Pell Jesus, and you see here, he's receiving the light on his face, the light of God, the sun. Hence, he becomes the sun of the world, um, the light of the world. And this was taken from right here, as you see, from Akhenaten, who is doing the same exact thing, who is... Um, giving praise to Aton, who becomes in Hebrew Adonai, in Greek Adonis, all right, the son of Zeus. And this is what this is being shown right here, all right. So um, I'm going to leave. Let me see. I got, I got a little bit more. Let me, sh let me see. Let me see. Let me see. Yeah, I'm going to leave it here. And we're going to come back and go over some more information. Are there any questions concerning anything that I've gone over? All right, there's no questions. I'm going to say peace to everyone.
and we will um, see you next time. And um, we love you all, and um, we're going to come back. Um, yes. We're going to come back when? Um, come back Sunday. All right? Sunday. Sunday. Yep. Yes. Sunday at 8 o'clock. Yes. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Chief. All right. Oh, you're welcome. Peace, everyone. Yes. Yes. Yeah.